And we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to I'd Rather Be Motivated, episode 23, starting strong in 2019 with your host, Scott Green and uh, David Fleming. I know that was an awkward toss, too, wasn't it? Gotcha. That was, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep him on the toes. And plus, I got to remember to turn down my phone. With your host, Scott Green and oh, there it goes. Uh, David Fleming. You... I know that was an awkward toss, too, wasn't it? Gotcha. Whoa. That was, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> are you muted on your side? <laughs> you got to keep him on the toes. Yeah, plus, I but I don't know why this is playing through. Um, with your host, Technical difficulties. It wouldn't be fun without it. Yeah, I found it. Here, hold on. <laughs> okay, that was you. I was like, I swear, I'm all muted up. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a few windows open from like doing setting this all up earlier. So, oh, starting strong. <laughs> um, but you got to just keep rolling. So anyway, I'm your host, Scott O'Green. Um, when I'm not here on YouTube, you can find me at, on Instagram at Mr. Green Draws, Mr. Green Draws. And David, where can we find you when uh, we're not here flubbing it, flubbing it up on YouTube? Uh, you can find me at Art of Mr. Fleming on Instagram and Mr. David Fleming on Facebook. Awesome. Well, we're here on a special episode uh, here on the new year. We are both happen to be off on the same day, and we thought this would be a fun way to start off the new year, which is kind of our whole theme uh, for today's show is starting strong. Um. So we were kind of just want to do a little bit of a recap of kind of the big moments that David and I had last year and, and what we have on our plate looking forward into the next year and how we plan on uh, just hitting the ground running. Um, it's not really a New Year's resolutions because it's been stuff that we've been ramping into, which I think kind of helps with a strong start, which we both feel with the new year. Um, but we'll get all into that stuff soon. But David, I haven't talked to you in a while. How has your holiday been? Oh man, it's been great. Uh, I have I hit it way lazier than I actually. I hit it about as lazy as I knew I would have. But I, I like I always try to tell myself I'm going to be way more productive than I ever end up being. But you know, it's like that. Like ah, I'm going to use my break, and I'm going to. But then once you get to a break, you're just like, no, I'm gonna I'm going to enjoy the fact that I don't have things on my plate, and I'm just going to like. I watched a lot of TV and played a lot of video games, and honestly, it was awesome. I still got some drawing done, but definitely not as much as I was hoping to. But I think that's that thing that a lot of people do where you kind of use that excuse, though, where you're like, man, I got like four days left in this year. I'm just going to chill and then I'll start strong next year, which is what we're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. I know a lot of people make fun of the whole idea of New Year's resolutions, which I kind of get because if you want to do something, you just need to do it. But I think for people like you and I who are in the midst of doing things, um, it is nice to, especially at the end of christmas and holidays where a lot of time is taken away from stuff kind of look into that january 1st mark as a as a starting point as a place to measure from so i don't feel like all right today i'll turn my whole life around it's just like cool fresh start let's get it going um and yeah by the way taking a break with is like hard as you've been pushing it with end of the school year and um how far your comic has been coming which i got the preview for analog missions it's beautiful, dude. I love it. It's really good. It's a well-designed book through and through. Um, and I think it's coming together nicely. But um, with as much work as you've been putting in, I think you definitely deserve a little bit of a break. No worries there. Yeah, my, uh, I always am like, and I know this about myself, but I'm always so much more productive when my life is busy. Like when I've got a thousand things to do, I'm super good at being like, and I'm going to use this chunk of time to do this and this chunk of time to do that. Because if I don't, I won't get to do it. But then when I'm like, all right, I woke up today and I have literally nothing to do with my life. I'm just going to watch some Netflix. That makes sense. Like even uh, having like this show to look forward to or like the 100 days of making comic stuff. Um, there's nothing like a deadline to really help you push through and get something done. Yeah. You know, like. And I don't know, not having much time gives you sort of a deadline every day of like, I have to get in this time. I have a half hour deadline. I got to hit every day, you know? Right. Yeah. There's, there's like a little bit of a, like, like when I first started wanting to draw more and stuff like that, I like told myself, like, I want to spend all this much more time, X amount of time every day drawing more. It was like, if, if I, if I literally don't section off these hours in my day, then I'll never draw. So like I had to, and then when it's the opposite and you're like, well, I've got 12 hours I could draw today. It's really hard to decide which, which of those 12 hours should you draw with? Yeah, I totally agree with that. 
this holiday season has been kind of hard just because I've been in a higher position than I've had a manager type position at a um, retail store. And it's just been crazy busy and long hours. And the time I do have away from there, I don't want to totally just then go to the drawing desk and ignore my wife and my brother and family and everything. Right. Um, and it's not like it's a chore to do that with them. I want to spend that time with them, but kind of purposefully since I'm, had kind of gotten a couple big projects done this year. Um, you know, like you said, you always kind of set your sights on wanting to do a lot more. And even um, the last couple of times we've talked, what I wanted to kind of do this month, I didn't get near that amount done. But that's why you kind of set goals a little bit higher than what you can achieve, I guess. But um, yeah, it's just been a rough year for getting that stuff done. And you can either just totally stress about it the whole time or kind of accept that sometimes like around Christmas and everything, it's okay to, you know, move that down the priority list a little bit, but it has been gnawing at me. I've been excited to really been chomping at the bit to get started on the next couple projects. All right. So are we wanting to do the classic catch up here, which we kind of like we did the first chunk or are you wanting to just jump in and talk about some stuff how you want to do today? <clears throat> I'm thinking um, just as a highlight because I think too often artists like they'll do projects and then just move past them to do the next one. But I think it'd be fun to kind of look back on um, things that we've accomplished this year, not to like dwell too much, but just things that like we're proud of, maybe some of the highlights that we've hit and then nurse ramp into um, what folks can look forward to on our channel um, in like the next days, weeks, months to come and everything. But um, that's what I kind of was thinking about. Um, I don't know cool. if you have I like that more. idea. Do what? I like that. So let's do, um, let's share like back and forth a couple different, like share one th highlight and then it's your turn. You share a highlight and then it's my turn and we'll share a few highlights and then we will share what, what you have in mind and what I have in mind for the channel, what kind of thing like separately like that too, like back and forth. Sounds good to me. Do you want to go first or? No, nah, it's all you. I'm giving okay. it to you. You got this. Um, so it was a project that took quite a while and it was over the time that like I moved from the Midwest where I lived near David to the Pacific Northwest in Washington. Um, but I did this comic book uh, for this band and then, you know, started before 2018, but it's something that I wrapped in, you know, the earlier side of 2018. And it was something I spent a lot of time doing. It was kind of the first um, real comic that I was doing, um, especially I was doing it for somebody else. They gave me a lot of leeway to do what I wanted and everything. So I still felt like it was a personal project, which was awesome. Uh, but it was something where I wanted to look, you know, I wanted somebody else to be proud of it. It wasn't just about me. Um, so I, I was really kind of pushing to make something, uh, quote unquote professional, but a real polished product. Um, and what it is, is, is the band's Isabel Crane and they had a single, um, called die in your sleep. And it's kind of an old timey comical, uh, song. And it's just sort of all the, uh, a lot of different ways that one could, uh, leave this mortal plane and how it would be so much better if one could just die in their sleep. Uh, so for fun, I went through and kind of illustrated in comical ways all the different ways that um, one could meet their demise, but it's all of the band members in all the different ways. Uh, so that was something that I'm really proud of. It's still for sale. I've got uh, a lot of copies. Uh, it's something I'm also excited to, when I start tabling again, which I'm excited to do in 2019, um, it's a product I'll have on my table and I'm pretty excited about. It's the size of a 45 record, so had a whole theme to it, wanted to look like a record album on the back and everything. But uh, I, my Instagram, if you click the link in bio, it takes you to my Etsy where I do have that for sale. And I'm pretty proud of that guy. So yeah, that was a big accomplishment in 2018 for me. That's Love my it. All right, uh, let's see, what's my first, I'm, it's like weird trying to think back to all the different things that we did like sort of touch on and mess with last year. Um, I guess I'd say like my first like uh, like talk about it like I enjoyed it accomplishment was uh, I did March of Robots this year for the first time, which is like a okay I I don't know why it took me so long to do that because I it's what I draw <laughs> it's like robots and stuff but that's actually sort of what I would definitely consider the thing that's as my springboard to actually get me finally started on analog missions because that I'd had all these characters and these like fun little designs and things in my head of like ver various very vague, vague 
images and doing them all for that was like definitely what sort of finally put me in the mindset of being like, oh, all right, I have visuals to this. They're finally on a piece of paper. Like, I think I actually have a thing I can do something with. Uh, that was cool though, because like up until then, I really only ever do like Inktober and I love like challenge stuff like that. So it's really fun to have like a couple of different things throughout the year. I think we talked about that a lot last year, actually, it was like finding challenges and making goals and setting things for yourself to kind of like grow in your art kind of thing. And uh, I think like that's in the future, I might like section out certain months, even if there isn't like a challenge I can do that other people do or something like that. And like just make it a, a monthly or a yearly goal basically kind of thing. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that net March of this year, I'll be doing analog, my Kickstarter for analog missions. So like will we, my, I've thought about maybe trying to find a way to mix like a March of Robots kind of theme thing with that as well since I'll like be literally making like a robot book for it kind of thing but so that's I'd say that's accomplishment number one that'd be sick if you did another March of Robots you don't even have to like necessarily wait till March and uh, maybe take like all the best ones and do like a, a little zine sketchbook as like the uh, inspiration behind the book sort of a product that can be kind of fun yeah I am definitely going to do something like that like in the book itself um like i'm one of these things that i'm really excited about for the whole like like it's my book and i get to do what i want with it kind of thing is that mm -hmm. like i'm gonna print tons of like not like you know like fan art pieces like things that people have drawn for me or the inspiration or like uh, original concept sketches of what some characters might have looked like before i got into it and stuff like that and so yeah it'd be a fun way of thinking of like maybe i start posting some of that stuff like during the month of it to like promote the kickstarter or something but yeah i'm really excited about being able to do the book the way i'm doing it because like the, there's like there's just that like there are no rules i can do whatever i want if i want it to be 12 pages it'll be 12 pages if i want it to be 50 it'll be 50 and that's kind of cool seems like a liberating feeling yeah and like back with like that kind of <clears throat> first big accomplishment of doing that march of robots i think it goes strong with something that like we've kind of talked about with those drawing challenges is yes they're fun to do but when you have kind of a goal oriented with it um or you you know need to tweak the 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 challenge to kind of meet your needs to help you accomplish whatever i think that helps a lot because then it's not just it's not just fun in your sketchbook, which is awesome. And if you're like, you know, I just purely need the practice. So as long as I'm putting pen to paper, I'm good. Uh, that's fine. But when you have kind of a goal in mind, um, you end up with something cool, like a comic book that happens because of it with a whole bunch of character designs. So, well, it's, it's that thing we always talk about of like needing like a project, like needing a product, you know, like if you make if, if you need to practice and get pen to paper if you pick something like march of robots or inktober then you're able to actively practice and participate in sort of like that thing you were going to do anyways but then by the end it's kind of like you said now you've made 30 awesome drawings that you can collect together and maybe you can sell some as originals or make prints out of them or like you, you get to take those things forward and make new life out of them and uh, like besides just like making your drawings for the month it's like it kind of pushes you into something that can become a project later Absolutely. And I don't even mean for this to happen, but it sounds like we had like a perfect plug planned because coming around to my second one, um, that was kind of what I did sort of to have this uh, last big project that I wrapped in the in 2018. But I did a whole bunch of individual character drawings um, uh, for Instagram. I just wanted to do some fun character designs um, because that's fun for me. And then after I would do them, I'd post them to Instagram and then come up with like a little story that I wanted to tell about them. Just a short little micro fiction, I call it. Um, and then, you know, like he's like David said, you know, we're disciples of Jake Parker. And so um, it, that whole idea of you need a product, not just a project. It was like, OK, what could I do with this drawing? I have the original that I can sell. I can copy it and make a print or and I kind of came up with, I mean, not on my own, because once uh, again, uh, this project wouldn't have happened without the influence of like Jake Parker and Inktober, but it wasn't something where I waited for Inktober. I just kind of over a month did a bunch of character drawings. Um, then I combined them into this as like a little, um, my idea was a theme sketchbook, but do it in more of a zine fashion. So it's, this is like a comic book size right here. 
and this is uh, my zine, and it's called Mr. Green's Monster Zine. Um, and it says on the front, Mr. Green's Monster Zine, Witness, Martian Magics and Man-Eaters of Mystery, Volume 1. Um, so there's like almost 20, I think, different characters and stories in there. And even uh, the guy from the front has his own story on the back there, and there's a whole theme to it. Um, but then even after doing that for Inktober this year, um, I thought it'd be fun to then do like sort of a group shot. Um, so on 11 by 17 paper, so bigger than this, um, I did a little bit. It, they're not quite like 31 characters, um, but I just kind of did all my characters throughout the month and then got it printed at cat print um, on real nice kind of watercolor paper and um, shrunk it to the size of a comic book. So then in a comic uh, thing, if you buy it, it kind of comes in like a whole package thing with this and then a sticker that goes along with it. Um, because then just trying to stretch my creative business muscles, I was trying to think of a product where not just this for sale and then a print for sale, but it's something where I only printed 25 of these. It's like a limited run idea. They'll all be signed and numbered. And uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to do it like as a combo pack. So I call it the creature combo pack because for me, I always have to have goofy words along with it. But anyway, that's kind of specifically what we're talking about is the idea of um, being able to take stuff that's just from your sketchbook and like craft and make, you know, products and um, then be able to have stuff once again, you know, on my table when I go to Comic Cons because uh, that's always been important to me. Like, I don't have like the print selection to choose from yet, which I'm excited to work on. But um, in the meantime, I like the idea of maybe having a couple books and a couple hopefully creative things that make people kind of stop and go, well, that's a little bit different. So um, that's what I'm proud of. So, yeah. David, I hope you're still there. I hope I just didn't talk while like everything cut out for like ever, but. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear a word you just said. I had to repeat all of it. <laughs> no. You know I would. I love hearing myself talk. Right. Oh, that's why you left the loop on there earlier. You just wanted to hear yourself once we got started, didn't you? Oh, it's just like music to my ears, just hearing that just echo back and forth. <laughs> and a nice right. laptop speaker. <laughs> you have like headphones in that just like looping what we're saying over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Accomplishment number two for me. Um, I think what I'd probably say is um, I don't know how to how to like word this one and call it an accomplishment, but like my schedule of like how I create was like a really big thing for me last year, like figuring out how to manage my time between two different things. And um, I don't want to talk about it yet because I want to make it my final one because I think we should share one more after this. Um, but sort of like this, uh, I, I made more prints last year than I've made in the two years prior, like since I started making and selling prints. Like I looked at my folder the other day when I was like organizing things and I was like looking at all the things that like I colored and I drew this year and I was like, oh my gosh, I like, I literally, I think I have 32 prints, I think now that I've made and that I, I still like kind of sell and put up on my wall and like 16 of those are literally ones that I made like this year. So it's kind of crazy to think that like just in a year, like once I got like my discipline down of like when I draw my stuff and color my stuff and all that kind of thing is that I can, how many I can like really make in a year. And that's definitely because I've gotten down sort of my like my flow digitally and it's still changing ever so much as I do it right now, actually, even especially since I started using my screen tones, there's a lot of like touch ups I have to do to kind of mess with my color work after I've done it. As you can kind of notice, it kind of, the screen tone stuff kind of darkens the colors and messes with them a little bit. So I have to do a little bit of touch up, which I'm still learning, but um, just I've, I started this thing where like certain days of the week, I'm, I'm allowed to be working on like a print or an illustration. And then other days of the week, I'm working on like my own stuff. Like it has to be either now, right now it'd be the comic, but before it was like, it has to be an illustration that is my own because uh, we talk about like convention stuff a lot and like what I want my table to look like. And I, kind of have like this ultimate goal that like because uh, I still really enjoy drawing like and putting my style and spin into like fun like fan art pieces and making prints out of them but my ultimate goal is to have like 50 50 like this half of my table is all all my own robots and things with analog missions and different stories I've written and this half the table is all just like my fun stuff that like I do that people can enjoy Sorry, I was listening the whole time. I was trying to be quiet, but then my chair squeaked. No, I think uh, 
I think uh, getting down your workflow is noticeable in your production and on your Instagram and something that uh, um, I'm wanting to work towards is like a workflow thing. Cause yeah, that's huge. Um, because you are, you have like, you've been churning out a ton of artwork. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a huge plus because you're balancing uh, life and art and that is tough. I mean, it always feels like yeah. we're never quite accomplishing what we want to, but you've really been churning it out, man. I definitely found a, um, what, like what's my level of creating where I'm not stressed, but I'm still proud of what I got done. Absolutely. That's definitely a, a hard thing to find. Where you still want more, but yeah, no, I hear you. You, you have to find some level of contentment because that's why we're doing what we're doing is like, we love doing this. So yeah, you always strive to be better, but if you just drive yourself insane with like beating yourself up, which is like, believe me, easy to do, um, then it just becomes no fun. And, and that's no good. But All right, share your last one that you can think of and then I'll, I'll share mine and then we'll talk about next year. <laughs> Yeah, so along with creating something that's like helped me make both of those products that I just kind of showed um, is 100 Days of Making Comics, um, which is something invented, created by um, artist Kevin Cross. Uh, so check it out. But uh, And I'd done a few of them, but in 2018, I did my volume three of that, which you can also see here on the YouTube channel if you check out some of those videos. And I have a top 10 uh, tips for completing 100 days of making comics if you wanna learn more about that. Man, I am plugging up a storm today. I'm like, look at that go. But uh, um, I accomplished kind of like a bit more to the letter of the law on the third one, which was really like every single day without skipping um, uh, at least a half hour and usually more hopefully more, quite a bit more than that, and then posting a video, whether to um, YouTube, Facebook, um, or Instagram, I post it every day. <clears throat> so in doing that, I accomplished quite a bit, not as much as I wanted to, um, but once again, like as I look back, I'm like, you know what, I did get all of this out of it. Um, but along with that, it also kind of entered me into the running to be in an anthology. Um, with the 100s group, which is a group on Facebook of alum that have created it, disciples of Kevin Cross, um, who have uh, kind of done the gauntlet and uh, completed it. And so since I kind of officially completed it and had some stuff, I don't know the exact cri criteria and everything, because it's not just like, can you draw or can you not draw? Um, I don't know. There's like a bunch that went into it, but there was a lot of people that um, tried to get in this anthology, which is like a bunch of short stories into one book by all of the people who have finished it. And I got accepted to do that, which I'm really excited about. <clears throat> so my third thing is just like that, like just kind of that particip participation in the 100s group and that kind of paying off to do something with some pretty cool people that I'm pretty excited about rolling into in 2019. Um, but that challenge kind of goes into all the stuff we talked about with um, finding ways to um, cut out time to make sure you're working every day on stuff, even if it's just a little bit, um, discipline with balance and all that sort of stuff, which it's not easy, but when you look back at, you know, it helping you create a bunch of artwork, um, it's, it's pretty fun to see that build up, you know, but uh, yeah, that's, that's my 2018 in a nutshell, I think. What's your uh, big number three? Well, I, you know what my big number three is. So uh, forever. So I, I think I keep saying three, but I think it's kind of more like four, three and a half. But basically, um, you know, talking about my art journey a little bit, uh, I got out of college and I, I'm, a, I'm an art teacher, but I knew I wanted to like always be drawing and stuff. And it's actually a part of why I chose what I, what I do. I like I had my little bit of my moment of like, what what do I draw when when no one else is telling me what to draw? You know, like after you go through art school, you you kind of have been making a lot of pieces because you had to, and some of them were because you know the theme or the thing was given to you by a teacher. But even near the end, it is like stuff you just made just because you like you chose it. But it was still like a I was doing it because I knew I had to get things done by a deadline and not just because I enjoyed it. And so. Uh, I like film. I found myself when we talked about that, like why I tell stories and why like comics and storytelling is what I fell back into. But I knew I wanted to start like honing my craft of drawing again and get better at certain things so that I could 
I could get in and I could make my own comic. And this last um, October with Inktober, I was finally sort of like ready to sort of take what I've learned over these past few years and, and make something. And so um, just starting analog missions, like actually making that first page and putting it to paper. And like you said, like I've, I've sent the PDF out to a few people already getting in the last finishing touches, finding my last bit of like spelling errors and grammar errors so I can send it out to you guys here in the next week. Uh, it's just been like a super awesome, like it feels like I've hit like an accomplishment or like a goal that I set out to do and I'm not even done with the, with the book yet kind of thing. Like, I haven't even gotten it funded yet and I'm, and I'm excited. Like I, I, I could get nobody buying this book and I would still be satisfied with the fact that I made it and I'd be able to push forward and decide like what to do next kind of thing. And I don't know, that was just like, it's huge for me to be able to be like, I, I set out to do this thing a few years ago and I'm now I'm here and I'm, I'm really actually doing it and it feels great. And then it's, it's like this fun thing where I'm able to balance. Like, I mean, even right now I'm, I'm coloring up another print from a drawing I made earlier last month and still making time and finding things in between to get this project done and be satisfied with it. So yeah, 2018 has been good. I, uh, doubled my workflow and started making my first final thing, you know, looks like we got some people jumping in the chat too. So let's like, give a shout out to red because he's been a huge supporter of us. Absolutely. Love you red. And he said, uh, you have been busy, David, keep up the great work, which it's that kind of support there from your fellow artists, which if you guys don't know Ronnie, um, you should go check out his channel. He's Ronnie Gunter, um, G-U-N-T-E-R. So check out that artist because he's fantastic. Um, but yeah, man, those are some huge accomplishments. Analog Missions, that preview is looking great. Um, are you still sending that out with the newsletter? Uh, it's going to come out in a separate newsletter, but yes, anyone subscribed to the newsletter will get it, but it, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make it a part of our monthly one. I'm just going to send one out that just is like a little bit of like a behind the scenes, just quick little snippet and then a link to it. Very cool. When about are you uh, hoping to do that by ish? I don't have a goal yet because um, I have a few, I have you and a couple other people who still need to read it and just okay. give me my, my final sort of once over. And, you know, I'm just like, it's like one of the reasons why I've put this off for so long is I am an artist first and then a writer. And I, I don't want my thing to appear that way. I want it to appear seamless and like the writing and the art belong and like there are simple errors and spelling and things like that, that just like slipped by me and stuff. So I'm, I'm having it looked at and edited and just like, I'm just having it like given the look at it, seven, check things seven times and then I'm happy and I'm good to go. And then the world can see it. So. Well, it's looking good, man. It's paying off for sure. Like all that hard work that you said, uh, it's been building towards this moment, but it looks good. So if you guys want to check that out and be in on those things, we don't spam you with a bunch of stuff. Um, but the click, uh, the link for signing up for our newsletter is down below. Um, if you guys want to check that out, um, it does lead towards um, free digital things, art giveaways sometimes, uh, but also just mainly keeping you in the loop of what's going on. Um, with David and myself. That's awesome, man. That sounds like a pretty killer 2018. Yeah. So, so you want me to jump right into 2019? Do what? Do you want me to just take that and jump right into 2019? Yeah, absolutely, because we talked about gonna... starting strong, and I think sometimes that's like in preparation, which like you've had this preparation going for a long time. So when you do have this mile marker of a new year and you're not done with what you want to have done, how are you using this momentum to just start rolling in uh, to the next phase? Right. So um, back to that, and that's kind of why I wanted to end with that, is just like, so yeah, I've got a goal that by March, early March, very early March, I will go live with a Kickstarter and get my funds, get my support, uh, get my, like get the money to be able to print this. Um, I'm gonna print it as a um, actual, like not a floppy, but an actual like soft cover, like bound, like perfect binding, I think is what they call that, where you, you it'll like be like a trade basically for anyone who collects comics. So, and that's a big thing for me. I've never been like my last, Thing that I made, my boy in the bike. I kind of just printed a floppy myself, style saddle stitched and all that kind of stuff. But I've kind of had this goal since the beginning of wanting to make something that feels like a like a thick book, even if it's not that long. It's gonna be about 50 to 60 pages, somewhere in between there when the final product is done. And like it's gonna feel like a nice thing to pick up and to read and 
I mean, it'll still be a comic and it's still, I know is something that most people read through those kinds of like a, that length of comic in 20, 30 minutes, you know, and then, and I've spent five months of my life making it, <laughs> but like, like that part, I want it to exist afterwards as this like awesome artifact that like looks good. And it's just like all this attention to detail and who I decided to print it with and how I decided to print it and all that kind of stuff just goes into it. So um, I'm just continuing that kind of thing, that journey of figuring out, actually, I guess I did. I figured out who I do want to print it and I'm really excited and happy about that. And knowing that I'm going to get a really nice quality, awesome book and stuff like that. And then there is the other side of that, which is that I don't want to stop making my other side of my drawings and stuff like that. So I just kind of finished that fun little series I was doing of like 30 minute drawings. I think I'll probably do something similar to that thing where I kind of do some fun filming time lapse of stuff. I might actually just start filming maybe some time lapse of like drawing actual pages from the comic or something like that. But this next month or two is going to be very heavy on the posts about the comic and stuff like that, because I really do want to just cram this out and, and get there with it. Um, I took a break from doing my Wednesday live show, my live ink thing, just because I knew that I'd be busy slash not busy and I didn't want to, and have a lot to share and stuff like that. So I'm going to get back on that. So getting that, having multiple things happening every week on our YouTube channel. Um, and then the, the biggest one that I want to do is um, finding more communication between me and the people that are my followers and my fans and stuff. Like um, I've kind of had this moment of like, sometimes uh, social media is a little passive. It's like you just put a thing up and then you move on and you hope people see it. So besides the newsletter, I've been trying to find other ways of just contacting my people people more on like personal messages and stuff like that to just like keep with relationships I've built with other artists and other people who are like into my stuff. And then my, uh, my final thing is the, um, I've realized it that I am, you know, I kind of talked about like, Oh, I'm finally, I'm here. I, uh, I put years of work into honing my craft and I've gotten so much better at drawing, but I'm still not there yet. <laughs> and I've realized it with a couple of different, like really difficult angles and things that I've been trying to draw in the comic. And so um, after the comic is out, I'm going to spend that middle of the, of the year do, going back to some basics and doing, that's when I'm finally going to get some stuff up on the YouTube channel, some how to draw stuff. And uh, I'm going to go back and hit the anatomy studies a lot harder and more and start put, like, making my sort of middle of the year stuff after the comic comes out is going to be like, you're going to follow my journey of just kind of going back and doing lots of st studies and stuff about how I got myself where I am and what I feel like I still need to do. And so, and then I'll end the year again, starting the next chapter of Analog Missions, book two. So that's 2019 for me. Wrapped up. Easy peasy. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that at the end, kind of plotting out that, like, you're happy with where you're at right now to accomplish this product, project, but you see that you want to get better, so you're even kind of plotting out okay, then this will be a good time in my life to kind of set aside to like get better. It just kind of reflected on something that like I'm, I've been thinking about a lot with the next two projects I have and then being like, then I think I'm really going to take a step back from making comic books and just work on the drawing board stuff, but makes good sense, man. Um, so yeah, my kind of ramping up into all this stuff is, uh, and way, to just keep the momentum going is quite easy. I am working on my, today is day one actually, of my 100 Days of Making Comics Volume 4. So um, I'm kind of a big advocate of, if you're doing a challenge like this, be able to keep things mobile. So I'm gonna be posting every day and everything. And so having like these notes here for my title page, cause I don't, not gonna be spending a lot of time editing when you're doing a video every day. Um, you're just kind of doing it on the fly and have everything you need ready to go. Even a little bit production there created by Kevin Cross. But anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. Today is day one, so it just it it begins. There's kind of no time like the present, and there's no time, no reason to wait on stuff like that. So um, it'll be kind of the same thing I did before, where I don't want to clog up just one avenue with. Uh, with a hundred videos in a row. So I'll probably kind of, it'll be on our Facebook channel, which is I'd rather be drawing. It'll be on Instagram as well as IGTV over at uh, Mr. Green Draws, MR.GreenDraws, and then some check-in fun videos here 
um, on YouTube as well. <clears throat> and David just touched a little bit ago on our YouTube channel, and that is a point of pride that Dave and I have been working on for a while. And I think we've actually got it to a point where we've got a, little, a lot of good content and stuff on here, and we have ourselves in a position to kind of keep building on that foundation um, in the future. And one of my accomplishments for last year that just kind of you know, are things I'm proud of from last year that is ramping in the new year is a new video series I started called Drawing Inspiration. And uh, like I talked about before, artists have a tendency to go, here I made a video and plug it once and then kind of leave it there to just kind of hang in the ether as well as other projects. And I'm like, uh, keep promoting that, keep letting people know. So for me, it's little wins like that. I've just had the one episode, but plugged it a couple times in a couple different ways and got a little bit of a response and um, taking a short vacation uh, into January a little bit and excited to make another um, travel art show drawing inspiration episode uh, from that spot on the Olympic Peninsula. So I hope you guys check that out and everything. But um, the whole thing is going to be documented as well through my 100 days of making comics. So um, I wanted to have my four page comic storyboarded. Um, which I'm going to show you. Like I said, there's nothing like a deadline. And today on day one and talking with you, it was like, I've got to got to get this done. It's just been sitting in my head too long. So to kind of show you guys here, especially how rough my thumbnails are, which I might tighten them up a little bit, but really for the most part, I keep them pretty darn rough. Um, but there's kind of page one and two, three and four. Don't want to give too much of a spoiler because I don't think anybody can really tell what's going on here besides me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really what's important in thumbnails. So, um, right. but you gotta, you gotta show and tell with 100 days of making comics. So there's my show and tell. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'm just going to be rolling into that. Got pages ready to, uh, formatted for drawing and, so I'm just going to kind of jump in the deep end with that. And I really think with this four-page comic, I'm a slow creator with art stuff, especially with working and all of that other stuff. I'm not quick, which I want to be faster, but I'm trying to be more realistic. But I'm trying to push myself. Um, I think I should definitely be able to get this four-page comic done. With here on day one having this blueprint, I think I can get this done in half the time I'm aiming for. Um, that still sounds like, I mean, 50 days is still a long time to make just four pages of black and white comic book, but um, it's not just my own thing. I'm putting this in with like all these other artists and some of these artists are, all of these artists are excellent. And so it's intimidating. So I do want it to look really good. I don't want to rush through it, but I am very excited to get back to this guy, which I didn't get a chance to do quite as much as I would have liked to in 2018 with October. He's my pumpkin headed monster character. My mom made this adorable doll. He's That thing is my literal Ooh. favorite. Yeah, dude. I'm really excited about this one. Like the, the fan art stuff that you said, I hope once I really get this rolling, uh, maybe get to see a little bit of that from some folks and everything and interpretations. And um, like I said, I have a lot of the story written out. One of my big goals for, you know, for wrapping up 2018 was to have his whole thing storyboarded as well, which I've been talking about forever. And I did not accomplish that with everything going on. And that's one thing where like, I was really beating myself up about that because I want to like get this four page story thing done and then just go right into October because I really want to have everything ready to go for the Kickstarter before Halloween and everything. And uh, it's honestly a lot um, to do and it's intimidating. As I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, oh, God, it's never going to work. <laughs> but uh, but now I'm just going to kind of keep rolling on that. And like you said, you kind of have two different projects going at once sometimes. So as I'm drawing on this, I can kind of go back to storyboarding a little bit on that. And that's what I did on my last 100 days, which kind of helped me stay sane through the whole thing as well, was having like multiple projects going at the same time to jump back and forth on. So anyway though that's that's what i'm excited for and my plan to get rolling but um i started off by talking about your plan on getting better because my thought was is i'm making this four page thing as a comp uh, contribution to an anthology i'm going to make the october book and then at that point i'll have you know the combo pack the 45 record single um october and this anthology book to potentially put on my table at that point i feel like is a good time to really kind of take a step back and whether it's 
So you're working on prints or stickers or whatever, but start learning, learning all the digital stuff and um, getting tighter on anatomy and, and drawing better landscapes and just being a better artist. I'll, always with that idea of um, you know producing content because I also want to make this a much more stable part of my income over time. Um, but yeah, so hopefully once I get those two, for me, rather large things wrapped, it can kind of be like time to really start honing my skill a bit uh, better. But yeah, man, that's me. Yeah, I uh, you like almost did a nice little plug there for me. Um, I made that comment in my live ink, one of my episodes of like, how do you, how do you keep yourself from burning out? And I really do think having two things at least happening at once, like, cause you, you, you get into like a big project, like a comic and you wake up one day and you just don't feel it and you don't do it. If you don't do something else, then you just get yourself out of your habits of drawing. And like, that's like one of the easiest ways to like fail of having a big project and trying to get something done. But if you're like, yeah, um, you know, any, any day I don't, have the time or the energy to put into my four page comic. It means I have to draw something for Inkto for or for October and, or I need to work on coloring one of my prints or, you know, like I have like, I probably have like five, uh, scanned in like ink drawings that need the, the touch up and can be made into a print. And so like if I ever sit down and I just don't really know what physical thing or what page of my comic that I want to be working on, then that's what I do. And it's kind of what happened here. I, I got home to set up for, this and I was like deciding page I wanted to put on my table and I was like yeah I think I'll just do some coloring because then I'm at least getting something done but then I don't feel like I didn't do anything today I love it yeah I'm definitely a fan of that multiple products uh, projects whichever multiple things that you're working on at once um, yeah it's just more fun so you don't burn out and yeah that live ink uh, that's here on our channel uh, at the shows by David. They are really cool and uh, where I go long-winded and my episodes can be a little bit longer um, His can be a bit more contained um, And they're really cool because your ability to like draw and ink live on the spot. I think is really cool um, Not everyone can do that So um, that's a pretty cool talent man. It's a good show. You guys should check it out. I appreciate you saying that one because even like to give you behind the scenes, sometimes I do sort of, I even think I say it in a couple of episodes, I get really into the ink and then I kind of forget that I'm talking or forget what I was going to say next. I'll be like, oh yeah, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, I love what I'm inking right now. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be talking. That's right. I'm talking to you guys right now. <laughs> no, it works. That's why like, I don't know, you, you know, and the Bob Ross and all those other guys, you know, they all kind of do that, but they find a way to sort of mumble in a little happy tree sort of way that even when they're not really saying anything it can still be relaxing and nice to watch while you're doing whatever the heck it is you're doing and yeah no man it works out well cool but yeah well man i don't know i, I feel like that's a pretty good catch-up i think it's like it, it's been almost a full week and a half because we just knew with the holiday we wouldn't be getting together i think i think it's a it's a pretty good place unless you had more comments to just leave it. And then uh, when we see you guys next, we're going to be doing part two of the series that we left off on before this one, which is uh, putting Scott on the spot and making him tell us all about why he. I don't know if you cut out to everybody else or just me, but I heard Scott on the spot and then you kind of cut out. In yeah, case. that's it. I put Scott on the spot and make him tell his stories, and then I was kind of like just dropping it over to you. Oh, bam. I think it sounded like a cutout. So I think you're waiting for me to come back, but that was really just me queuing as your turn. Oh, okay. So yeah, stay tuned for that, folks. And like I said, um, you'll start getting uh, daily catch-ups from me starting today. Uh, it won't all be on here, so don't worry. Um, but if you want to stay tuned on that, where I'd rather be drawing here on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Uh, we also have I'd rather be drawing.com where you can access some other free comics that we've made and check that stuff out. Uh, you can access that website on the link below that says sign up for newsletter, which is what's going to keep you um, in the loop on the different cool Kickstarters and things that we have going this year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Like I said, it's not spamming. It's just going to be stuff where we have a lot of cool things to show you and we want to let you know about it. Um, so please sign up for that. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Red, for the love. Always love having you here with us. 
Um, it's very much appreciated. And I hope everything is going well with you and your family this new year. Um, when, and I think, oh yeah, on Instagram, Mr. Green Draws, did I say that one? MR.GreenDraws, I probably said a million times, but um, that's where you'll find me. 100 days of making comics, so stay tuned on that. David, where are we going to find you giving us your updates? So one of my also resolutions, just to wrap up with that, is sort of not pulling myself too thin. So I am really just, I'm I'm down to just, it's going to be either something on the YouTube channel, like you said, I'd rather be drawing, or it's going to be on my Instagram or my Facebook. Like, I'm not trying to start up anything new. I'm just trying to focus in on the things that we I already have kind of put my time into. So um, Art of Mr. Fleming on Instagram. Fleming is F-L-E-M-I-N-G, one M, and then Mr. David Fleming on Facebook. So you can find me either of those two places. Um, I post pretty much the same stuff. I do a little bit more stuff on the story and stuff on Facebook, just to like casual stuff. But um, yeah, you, you just follow me on one or both of those places. You're going to catch all the good updates. So um, yeah, thanks for tuning in again, guys. Uh, Scott, you got anything else to say before we, we end this? Happy New Year, suckers. Go draw. All right.